You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And good morning. This is Mike Lodge. I'm glad that you have joined me. This is Mike Lodge of the Michael Lodge Show. Pretty good name. Listen, today's a beautiful day here in South Florida and Palm Beach. I, I'm looking outside at the moment. The sun is starting to come up and we have perfect blue skies. I don't see a cloud anywhere at the moment. Now, we'll get some later on during the day, but probably going to be in the mid-70s, I, I think, here today. But the mornings are nice and cool. I love these cool mornings. I have all my windows open in my house because I love this fresh air that's coming in. I'm four blocks from the ocean, so I've got this nice, cool breeze that comes in off the Atlantic Ocean. So I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Listen. Over the last uh, couple of days of the new Biden administration, things are not going too well. It seems as though the White House is a little dishuffled and not quite sure exactly what they're doing. And that is the problem that we've seen, especially on the economic front. To this day, I'm, 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 I'm bewildered as to what the president's economic plan is. Now, we saw yesterday that he did some executive orders that literally uh, killed jobs in the, in, in the United States. That's not a good sign to see on the very first day. And now it sounds like the stock market is beginning to look at this and saying, hmm, maybe this is not such a good thing on, on this job killing front. Listen, from the day one from day one, since this whole thing has begun, I have been asking and asking and asking what is his economic policies for the United States? Unfortunately, what I've seen yesterday, it was more politics over jobs. In other words, he had made all these promises that, that he was going to stop fracking, which, by the way, fracking has made us oil independent, which is a good thing. But now we're not going to be. He cut the, uh, uh, the pipeline deal that was producing jobs and also economic rewards for the United States. So we we have a problem, and the problem is is that we don't know what his policies are. We just don't know. It is obvious that he is not pro business. So we in the business world, we have got to play it safe, and that's why you see capital moving offshore again. People are looking at other countries to move to, and also to put their money. In a place where it's less taxed and less uh, red tape, and so that's what we're seeing at the moment. With <clears throat> behind the scenes, we're seeing individuals begin to look at other countries to move offshore to. Happened the same way under the Bush administration and also the Obama administration, where the taxes were. They knew taxes were going to go up. They didn't know how uh, the administration was going to attack their business. So they said, okay, we're fine. We, we'll wait it out for four years, and we'll go to another country. Unfortunately, last time they had to wait eight years, and companies were literally put on hold because they did not know what, the, what President Obama was going to do. Well, we have the same situation at the moment where there is no clear stated plan of what what Biden's economic plan is, except that we know that he is making do on a whole bunch of political um, promises that he had made during his campaign. So, and, and I'll say this again, because I've been saying it over and over and over for the last year, for the last 12 months, prepare if Biden won, to become a financial conservative. Now, I know that you liberals out there hate that word conservative. But this means something differently. This means that you're going to have to manage your money better. That means that 
instead of going out and spending capital and you don't know what is going to hit you tax-wise or red tape-wise or employment-wise, that you better hold off just a little bit and be conservative because we don't know in which direction Biden is going. We haven't known ever since he began his campaign. We just have not known. With Trump, we knew. We knew exactly what he, was, what he was going to do because he stated it and he did it. He kept his promises. Unfortunately, the only promises that we have from Biden is that he's going to raise taxes and he's going to cut jobs. <laughs> he's going to cut jobs by eliminating some of these programs like the Keystone Pipeline and other projects that created jobs and economic, economic soundness. So we don't know at the moment. So I want each and every single one of you, even if you are an individual, not just a business, but an individual, hold off on spending money. Make sure that you have a, a, a rainy day fund, or what I, in business we like to call it a contingency fund, <laughs> so that in case something happens, businesses do it all the time, listen, if we think there's a lawsuit coming up or we think there's something that's going to hit us on in our business, in, in our marketplace, we put together funds and we accrue costs to take care of it when it does happen. If it doesn't happen, then it goes back into, into the profit line. But individuals need to operate the same way. Build your contingency funds up. We had 900,000 unemployment numbers yesterday, people filing. That's not a good number. We're going in the wrong direction. And if we keep hearing that the, that the president is cutting and attacking businesses and business theories, we are going to have a problem in the United States. 900,000 people yesterday in the report was just way too many people. We should be going... The opposite direction. We should be creating jobs, creating new businesses. Unfortunately, the new businesses are that are being created in the tech side is very low people, jobs-oriented companies. They're not employing big numbers of companies. I mean, big numbers of people. So if we knew, as a business owner, if we knew in which direction... Biden is going in, it would make it a lot easier. We knew under Trump what was going to happen because he already said what he was going to do. But Biden has made it very clear that taxes is going to be a big priority in raising those taxes. Now, he says it's going to be on millionaires, but it never happens that way. This millionaire tax is baloney. I'm telling you, it's baloney because when you saw the tax returns and how it hit last time when Obama was in office... It did damage to people's tax returns. It did not help them. So we, we, we are uncertain at the moment. We're in, uncertain about the president. We're uncertain about his economic policies. We're uncertain about his diplomatic roles. We're uncertain about how he treats the military, as we saw in Washington, D.C., where the National Guard was pushed out of the Capitol and put into a a garage. And there are some states that have called, Texas and Florida have called their troops home, the National Guard troops home, which they have the right to do. And I think that's what should be done. Because honestly, those troops that were there were not needed. They just were not needed. But it was a big show. It was a big political show. Everything from now on, it's not going to be about the American people. It is going to be about political show, political power. So if you think something's going to be done in Washington in the next four years that is going to help the American people, no, it's not going to happen. We keep hearing about, about Biden's COVID plan, but basically it's the same as what Donald Trump's plan was. So... I tell you, we are in a sticky wicket at the moment. I'm not going to say we're in a mess, but we're in a sticky wicket. 
the and the economic policies of any president drives a good portion of the economy and when we see a president on his first day begin to attack businesses then we have an issue that we should be concerned about now a lot of the economy is driven by you and I it is and we have got to have confidence in this economy do I have confidence at the moment no I don't believe I do because I don't know what the policies are of this president I just don't know what they are with the economic situation that we're in where we have a lot of people signing up for unemployment again. If you do not loosen the COVID business restrictions that all of these states have, San Francisco, and I mean, there's, I think there's 50 some San Francisco restaurants that are suing Governor Newsom. And they have a legitimate right to do so because they have been hit hard by this governor. If you don't start lifting and let businesses begin to survive again, we know how to handle COVID, okay? We know what the mandates are for us to deal with COVID in our offices, in our businesses. We know what to do. If you you continue to strong arm them and not allow them to open up, you do more damage because what you're doing is shutting down companies that have been in business for a long time. Open up these businesses, open up these restaurants, and let them start serving the public again. Otherwise, you have an economic mess that you can't clean up unless you begin to open up the economy. If you're going to hold the economy down, hold businesses down, and not allow them to open up their their establishments, you are doing so much damage. And we have not heard anything from the president except that he wants to create more mandates on the face mask and more mandates about flying and more mandates. So many mandates, but no action on how to help businesses out there. Nothing out there. So, again, as I've said before, this economy is really up to us. But we've got to get these governors off our back. So... Forget about the national issues at the moment and focus on your state issues, your local community issues. If you have a governor that continues to shut you down, remove him from office. It's it's time that you start doing that. Start taking some control back from these governors and these local yahoos who think they have power. Listen, if if you compare California... If you compare it to Texas and compare it to Florida, those two states have are already back to work. The restaurants are open. Everything's running smoothly. The numbers yesterday for COVID for the state of Florida is down and will open. San Francisco, Los Angeles, and the whole state of California still remains closed because of politics and not on science. So you, if you compare. As, uh, if you compare California against the other two states and other states who are open and up and running, it's the same results. In fact, California is worse. They shut down and the numbers became worse. So shutdowns and lockdowns are not working for California. They just aren't there. It's making things worse. And plus with the, the homeless population that is there, Expect that bug, that COVID, to spread. You've, you've got people out there who are not getting the medical attention. You've got people coming across the borders and getting medical care out of our county hospitals there. If you go into a county hospital, you will see that they are packed with people because they're coming across the border. Families are bringing them across the border so that they can get COVID care. So California created that economic and COVID issue on themselves through a really bad 
set of policies coming out of the Sacramento, out of the governor's office, and out of the state legislators' offices there. So California has created their own big mess. If you look at the other states who are open and running and, and letting their people work and travel and doing all, all that other normal stuff, the numbers are down. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. But it's under control. But California is under control because they've had such bad policies. Economic bad policies and COVID bad policies. You can't shut Americans down, and that's exactly what California did, and they don't want to unlock. So now we have a new president who has the same mentality as California, where he wants a whole bunch of mandates of control on COVID. And mandates cost money, and mandates also cost lives. And we have got to get away from this nonsensical stuff that we that more rules and more regulations is what saves us from COVID. It doesn't. It hasn't worked. Getting people back into a normal swing of life does work. So I'm I'm getting back to my point now on Biden and his economic plan since we don't know what it is. Unless he does an executive order, then we kind of know what it is. Hold back. Build up your contingency cash funds because you're going to need it for 2021. If we're uncertain of which direction the country is going, when there's no good economic indicators of because everything's in limbo because no one knows what Biden's going to do. And it, it appears to me that Biden is making these decisions that he made yesterday purely on political. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with an economy, it's not a political situation. It is what is good and what is right economically for the American people, not political. I, I'm telling you this from my heart, and I've grown to see this over the last few years, is that politics destroys an economy very quickly. And we have to be very cautious about anyone who is more political than he is about common sense economic decisions. So what are we going to do? Well, you and I, we're going to keep running our businesses. We're going to try to be as creative as possible in creating new revenue streams. We're going to try and keep our our expenses under control and maybe even reduce them a little bit. But we need to increase our business inflow. And we need to put together our contingencies. And if you're an individual, operate your life, your family as a business and start building your contingencies for yourself. Be prepared for anything at all times, especially now, especially now. I always say this, I love America so greatly, but we also need to know that politics is a corrupt and unethical profession. It really is. And if you look at how politicians are acting right now and what they're saying and how they're treating people and everything else, it really kind of give you an ind indication as to are the next four years going to be about unity or is it going to be about pushing in a political agenda that is not good for the American people but is pure politically power driven that's the question that we have to ask what is their agenda because right now we see nothing Bernie Sanders came out yesterday attacking all of the billionaires that are in in the United in the United States I'm a, I'm I'm, I'm I'm afraid that if you start attacking these individuals, that they are beginning to say, okay, well, then I don't need to be here. I can go someplace else. I can move my company someplace else. There are companies out there right now who are doing a bang-up job at the moment because that's their whole focus is moving people to other countries that are tax-friendly to their type of business or their type of lifestyle. 
And so it's happening. And that's what happens when people get scared and they're unsure and they're not certain to what's going to happen economically, tax-wise. They move to company, countries where they're wanted, where they can operate safely. And some of these people have four countries that they move around to because they know and they hire the right people to advise them on what to do. Now, you and I, we are common everyday people. So we have to manage our own lives where we're sitting at at the moment. And that happens to be in America. Now, there are states that are tax-friendly, business-friendly. And there are states who are tax devils <laughs> and business haters, then you should not be there. If you stay in that type of situation, it's going to get worse and worse and worse, and pretty soon you will, you will be out of business. So we have to make some business decisions on our own, especially in our private lives. Can I afford to live in the state that is taxing me on my property taxes, taxing me on my highly on my uh, gasoline tax, taxing me, taxing me, taxing me, taxing me? Do I stay in that type of a of a state environment, or do I move to a state where the economy is better? There's no taxes. They're pro business, and the housing is much cheaper. I can live much better with less money. So those are the questions that a lot of people are asking. Even I, I look at the uh, San Francisco Business Journal every morning, and there are articles in there about people moving out and why they're doing it. And And you can understand their feelings because they feel as though that they are in a situation where taxes are going to have to be raised so significantly by California because they have such a debt in their employee pension plans. They are debts in billions of dollars. If you think that that money is going to pay for roads and everything else, it's not. It's going to pay and fund those pension plans of state employees and county employees and city employees because they're all in the same plan. So people will say, well, I, I don't want to pay for somebody else's pension plan. I don't want my taxes to go up, so I'm paying for a state employee's pension plan. Who is, their plans are so significantly great, that's why everybody wants to work for the government there because their retirement plans are so good. <laughs> So, listen, it's a simple situation here. Simple situation. We've got to watch out what Biden's going to do. Challenge him on things that are going to hurt the economy. And for us, on a personal financial basis, we are going to build up our contingency plans, and we're going to focus on our businesses, and we are going to survive. We are going to make it through. And maybe, by the grace of God, we'll even do better. And maybe if we tighten our belts a little bit, maybe if we build up our contingency plans, and maybe if we are focused on which direction we want our businesses to go and our personal financial lives to go, we will be okay. We'll do okay. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. That is the case. And I'm hoping that each and every single one of you will slow it down a bit, and begin to build your financial plan so it's strong. And that you've covered yourself for those rainy days or rainy months. Or as Biden likes to call it, the dark winter. <laughs> so get your contingency funds for that dark winter. Listen, if you have any comments or remarks, questions on business... Send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. By the way, I wanted to say something. 
I made a comment yesterday on one of the social networks, and we were talking about about the economic plan and everything. And this lady, this lady, got into the conversation. I have never met such a mean, grumpy old lady <laughs> as I met in that lady. She literally has so much hate in her in her heart that she cannot even have a civil conversation with individuals talking about the economy. So I was I was truly amazed at, and, I, and I thought, gosh, you know what? This social media stuff is still going to be filled with hate. So what do you do? So I just laughed at the hate because I thought, you know, you have so much hate in your heart, you you just you're just ruining your own life. So we've got to put this hate to the side, people. Although we see a lot of hate coming out of Congress and all of the dirty remarks and everybody's trying to attack everybody and put them on blacklists and and censor them. I mean, we have so much going on that it is that the American people feel as though that they can do it too. So they really, really attack you. I don't care. You know what? If you're going to attack me, have a good argument. If you don't have a good argument, you're just going to call me names. You don't have a good argument. You don't have anything. Except that you hate the other person in the way that they believe. If you cannot come back to me with a good argument, and you're just going to call me names, I'll block you. (laughs) I'll block you. And I challenge everybody who talks on social media, if you don't have an argument, if you don't have a good discussion point, if you don't have your knowledge in your head about the situation... Shut up, because you're making yourself look like a fool. If you're just going to sit there and hate somebody, you don't have any legitimate argument. So that's my my comment on that lady that was mean to me. (laughs) Oh, no, now that's going to be people are going to start responding. Oh, poor you. She was mean to you. Well, yeah, she was, but I took care of it. Very nicely, very professionally. I always do. Hate is such an evil thing, isn't it? I tell you, we have seen so much hate. I'm getting so tired of it. I'm beginning to laugh at hate. So if anybody comes to me, if you see me on social media, and if you if you send me a message of hate, I'm just going to laugh at you. I'm just going to laugh at you. Because hate just doesn't get us anywhere. If you want to have a good conversation with me, sometimes I have a lot of conversations with people. We sit down and we talk. Sometimes we don't agree. Sometimes we have a a good conversation. Sometimes it gets heated. But at the end, we always walk away friends. And we say, when when are we going to see each other next? (laughs) Those are the kind of people that you want in your life. Those people who, who believe differently than you will make a strong argument, and you make a strong argument, argument, but when you leave the table, you're still friends. <laughs> Listen, I wish that happened. I, you know, I'm a, a mediator, so I mediate business disputes and family disputes, and I wish that a lot of times that people would sit down at the table with an open mind, open ears, and begin to negotiate and walk away with a good opportunity. I have seen that happen so many different times where people came in mad but they ended up being good business. They had a good business relationship after the mediation. So listen, I want that same situation to happen. If you're going to if you're going to contact me on social media and you're going to start talking to me, let's have a good talk. Let's have a really good talk. But I want you and I to end up as friends afterwards because that is the right way to do it. Listen, if you want to support me on my on my podcast here, in my blogs, and my vlogs, and my podcast, <laughs> you can go to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. Help me out. I'd greatly appreciate it. Everybody go out today and have that kind of day where you know that something good is going to happen. Get out there and make something happen. Do something good to some other person today. Even if you have to just lift your face mask down and give them a big old smile and then put it back up, do it. 
I haven't seen smiles for a long time. You know, it's so funny because I'm in stores and, and grocery stores and stuff, and I'm wearing this mask, and as I'm walking by people, I'm still smiling under my mask, even though they can't see it. <laughs> I'm still smiling because everybody deserves a smile. Everybody deserves a kind word. Everybody deserves good understanding of what life is or should be all about. This is the day. This is your day. Make somebody's day today. This is Mike Lodge. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye and God bless. This podcast is produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on its content.